All right. So yeah, this is the the Valentine's Day game mechanics AMA. Um, so going over the the recap with Sandwich Punch written up. This guy's like a a guru wizard. Had it out in like a quarter of a second as soon as the AMA was done. Uh, so just a little introductory language here. So yeah, this was uh, held by Hubert Cumberdale uh, and then Frisky Fox and Dreamer and Nonlinear Penguin. One of the things I was saying even before this to somebody else was like, um, you know, we were take we were really spoiled with like Hubert and Dreamer, like kind of casually always dropping in and like dropping Alpha in the DFK Discord, and uh, and when they don't do that, which it's not like they're obligated to do that, um, it feels like it's radio silence, and so that was kind of I think like um, had been like apparent and starting to, like frustrate some people, and so. Uh, I think this was good. They kind of like a hit, kind of addressed that at the beginning too. Um, uh, that they, uh, I'll just actually get to it real quick. He said uh, right here that lots of things we're working on right now. Haven't been announcing them that soon, just because people ask when. Um, you know, so take that for what it is. But you know, that was that was the explanation. Um, so yeah. Uh, all right, so I'll, I'll wrap this up. I won't, you know, I'll just summarize this, you know. So, yeah, DFK Day, I'm anticipating a lot tomorrow. They're all there. They were all doing the AMA from, like, the hotel in Denver um, this morning. So that's that. And then, yeah, so I covered this. Um, you know, take it or take it for what it is. They're kind of saying they're just being, a, they're keeping, you know, his words were, we're keeping things closer to the chest, you know, as we work on things because we don't want to, you know, falsely um, say when things are going to be, you know, dropped or released or whatever. So that's that. Okay, we briefly, in passing, mentioned some of these things. Number one, the Parrotless Journey. We will talk about this in a lot more detail at the event, but to give you an overview, there was a promotional video, which uh, hopefully we all saw that. Um, and number two, this was really interesting, and they got into guilds kind of pretty early in the AMA. So land tournaments, so they are in the work. They are in the work. Can't give you a deadline, but as far as the way it's going to work, it will be our very first foray into PvP. It won't be combat, but it will be the PB, uh, PvP in a simplified tournament where it will start, or will, it will be stat-based, and it will be the best of seven match. It will allow us to start prototyping things we need to do for the combat system, need to be able to display what happened in the contract interaction in a sequential approach. This allows us to do that and gives the player something fun to do and to compete for land ownership. So that's like mega, like, big time right there. I mean, that's... Um, so I think, you know, I was in the price discussion chat earlier and a lot of people were saying that, you know, this isn't the debate of like, this isn't what the PVP is ultimately going to look like. They're, they're, they're saying that very, you know, explicitly, it won't be, you know, the, the sen second sentence right here, it won't be combat, but it will be PVP in a simplified tournament where it will be stat based and it'll be the best of seven. So just something for them to kind of start you know, using that kind of data, I guess, to figure out what the ultimate combat uh, mechanics will be. Um, so I think that's really cool. Uh, and the land tournaments uh, definitely applies into the guilds, which I think is where we're going next with this. As far as things in the pipeline, Hubert mentioned Perilous Journey, land tournaments, combat system, other pipeline, or other thing in the pipeline is travel. So we have a big, beautiful map that the art department is working on. Um, one thing we'd like to have is the ability to move around and do uh, quests uh, specific to that region and fight enemies in those regions. To that, we need a good travel system that is blockchain compatible. There might be some mockups that may get posted in the voiceless chat uh, that we are prototyping with. The idea and technology here is pretty novel, so we are excited to get this out to you guys. This is not what the final product will look like. Okay, so I guess we get into the game mechanics because, or not the, I mean, the, uh, the subclass was through the questions here. But that was kind of all they said. That was like the State of the Union from the devs um, before they got to the Q&A. And it was a pretty short and sweet AMA today. It, was, you know, it wasn't as long as the last couple had been. So if question number one, and there's a guy, you know, like most people that get the stage to ask questions, they like get a three-in-one question time here. So uh, will competition happen for all available plots at once, or will it be staggered? One big tournament for all lands or 50 different tournaments? Um, so Hubert says, you know, 949 plots in Serendale, but then also plots in Crystal Vale and other expansions as well. The plan is that each land will have its own tournament, each land. There will be concurrent tournaments, so you won't be able to send the same heroes to concurrent tournaments, uh, 
we hope to rope in the travel system so that you'd have to travel to specific lands to be able to participate in the tournament there. So Penguin, we want lands to provide a lot of utility to land owners, but also want social aspects around them. So there's utility for a larger set of the player base as well. We have discussed resource management systems, heroes contributing to gathering resources, guild systems. These are all things in the works uh, for different types of utility that the land will have. So, I mean, that's like super, super cool. Uh, we have discussed resource management systems, heroes contributing to gathering resources, and guild systems. We have this in mind where we want to have crafting and we want it to be hero-based with a skill system in place to be able to make the best things. You'll need to put in the time and energy to increase the hero's skill to get to a point where they can make the best equipment. So that's, you know, another thing to, like, heroes with the higher levels, better equipment. So not just a better hero or with better stats, but uh, better stats and, and a better shield and a better everything. Um, that paragraph you had highlighted there, Beaks, about... Um putting time and effort into crafting. Um, that's, that's really important because it, as we were having this discussion earlier about the AMA, um, we were kind of discussing like how people um, with a lot of resources can basically just buy the best things in the game. But um, we were talking about like, how do you balance that? And right there is kind of how you balance that, right? Because they said like with the PVP, PVE, uh, you know, uh, traits and things like that are important, but uh, the armor and, you know, your levels and things like that also make a big difference. So um, if if you're a person that plays the game uh, a lot, right, uh, and you can create that high-level armor and stuff, you know, some of those bigger wallets, you know, they, they may spend all day just sending their heroes on quests and not having time to focus on those little things. So I think that was really important that they that they mentioned that there. Just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so finishing that up, we have uh, that, and there's still a lot of work to put into that. Th these are complex, and a lot of balancing needs to go into this, but we want to have uh, a first level 1 through 20 of resources needed for crafting and then uh, work on the rest. That is why the level 10 profession quests have been somewhat delayed, is because we are trying to get some of the resources that we'll be using craft in, the, in a crafting system built in. Yeah, really, really anticipating how that the leveling, the different you know leveled profession quests are gonna how that's gonna all look. Drop rate calculator specifically for heroes based on the profession skill, so that players can plug in their hero and see the likelihood of rewards. Great suggestion. Um, just a little bit of a taking some of the ambiguity of the of the quest, I guess. But who knows? Okay, uh, Hubert. We have released the base chances, but those chances grow as you increase in skill. Yeah, so we all know that. Live questions. This is what I was referring to, the three-in-one, by the way, where, where it always gets a little crazy. Um, so I'm going to, like, skip the... You know, that's a lot to read there, so I'm going to go and just hit, hit the answers here. Uh, so lots of good questions. Um, on the view of Gen Zero... Or maybe I should read this so there's context. I don't want to... I first wanted to talk about the heroes in the hero market. Without compelling reason, older heroes are selling for, uh, aren't for selling for a premium. The experience from the wishing well has been washed away, and nobody had the benefit of a hero bot. So those heroes are almost at a disadvantage, with liquidity being expected to, to be supplied on the lower side, and where you need X jewel in the bank, we need price discovery on the upside. In the rare event that you get a good card, you don't have a bidding war, and since Gen Zeros are the only assets... Um, uh, with the rest being commodities, can you talk about how you envisioned the tavern working initially in the plans? Secondly, can we get a big concept dump on what you were thinking about when you made the genes, the mutation rates, etc., so that everyone is reading from the same book? It's hard if you are looking through the tavern to find a recessive gene that you want, so it makes a seller lower their price to sell more quickly. Lastly, could the wishing well be reformulated so that older heroes could have an extra benefit, so that they could have an extra or extra benefit, so that they could have an extra benefit? The summing costs uh, were likely built with some model. Is that something you can be shared? Okay, so <laughs> this is what I mean. The guy is like, yeah, I have a question. But they were all extremely good questions. So uh, how do they tackle it? So lots of good questions. Um, on the view of Gen Zeros being an asset and other commodities, if you think only summoning, uh, if you think of only summoning, you can see that the non-Gen Zero is consumable resources, but they all have their primary or secondary utility of questing. 
questing will continue to evolve and, and then combat and then other bits of utility, uh, which I think is kind of a, a hint hint to like um, being able to quote unquote build resources on the land plots whenever they expand into that. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. I don't think that just because you are not a Gen Zero that you are totally different in terms of the asset uh, commodity slash commodity. Have to look at it in net present value. There's a lot of good points of transparency of a marketplace, um, which I really think is is the the real p part there. Personally speaking, I think it, you know there's a lot of this like, man, if we're really gonna sit here and min max like heroes and summoning and getting the best heroes, whether it's for PvP or the best summon or the best questers, it's like the amount of metadata that they are forcing us to have to like get not easily is a lot and it's kind of taking some of that maybe quote unquote fun of the game out and so um whether they make it more that data more readily available and transparent in the tavern um or you know i think he's kind of that's that, that was my take from when he was like uh, can we like all be reading from the same book here because it's like if if people don't know what to value in the tavern and someone's like, Oh man, they don't know. I have like this, you know, the, uh, the transcendent two with the recessive one. And like, everyone's like, Oh, it just looks like a thief, you know, whatever. Um, that's the disparity, right? It's like someone knows it and someone doesn't know it. And, and the market is, you know, not efficient and not as, you know, healthy, um, or vibrant as it possibly could be. If everyone was kind of like, Oh, like this is like the playbook of like alpha and metadata that we're like, you know, following from. So I was really glad he brought that up. Uh, Frisky's answer was uh, to that same person was you asked how it started, the vision, and where it's at now. Heroes are always seen as assets in our model. There's the question of ROI and how long it takes to win back what you've invested. Yes, we have spreadsheets um, and simulations and charts and graphs, but it all comes down to how long does it take you to get your ROI, Gen Zero, but strong ROI. ROI. Kind of keeps going on. It kind of got a little, like, esoteric. They're gone. Just getting into, like, tra traditional finance stuff. Um, so I might just kind of breeze past that. On right here, uh, yeah. So someone, someone wanted to say something. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, you're you're right there. Uh, the advanced and recessive genes. That's what I was yeah, yeah, I didn't want to skip that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in advanced and uh, stats and recessive genes, I envision these being an equalizer, so that three mythic dread knights wins the game. Uh, I envision these being an equalizer so that three Mythic Dread Knights wins the game and it's over, question mark. Can you shed light on it so that people playing can understand what you are thinking? Um, so to hit back on the first part, when you look at traditional NFTs, which are just art pieces and speculation, we want to create a new breed of NFTs that have utility and can be used as investment vehicles rather than just being held. Okay. On equalizers, is there any one hero that will win everything? Uh, no. There will... Be heroes that have strengths against certain things and weakness against, weaknesses against other things. Strategy will come into play. We will be monitoring these things and having a ranking system of sorts to match you up with people of a similar rank. Uh, there will not be one that, hands, uh, that will win hands down every time. Hubert can, properly, Hubert can speak more to this. You know, personally, I was thinking, like, if you, you know, for the Warcraft players or whatever, it's like if you're a level one hero, it's like you're not going to get like matched up with like a level 20 where it's like obviously unfair. So like a level one might go against a level three or a level three might go against like a level six. And, you know, it's typically like trying to be close and competitive, but that's just speculation. Hubert followed up with, I'm assuming that you are referring to the skills gene or skill genes when you talk about advanced genes, so if uh, there's the skills you get from your genes, that's an extra set of skills where you can try and get uh, the higher level versions and try to get a better hero, but each class, and that's I think referring to kind of like the metadata we talk about, um, but each class has its own skill tree you can pick from, so it will be a game of what's the best combination, and we have never had the intent that those genetic skills will be the one and only way to get the edge over a higher ranked class. Uh, we will have equipment and other items. Oh, that was the other thing. This is really, really important to this. We will have equipment and other items. I think those was uh, kind of talking to this earlier. Um, is that like, even if you're like, oh man, like all I have is basic combat skills uh, and they have the transcendent skill. And like, does that mean 
that that hero is like technically like overpowering. And I think what they were saying is that you know if you can say you, say you your hero that has only got basic scom- combat skills has a higher level, then you can buy higher better armor. And so it's like you can actually buy better gear depending on which hero you have, which can you know, outweigh that overpowering of what another combat, sk- like a higher uh, or a rarer, you know, combat skill level might be. So I think that was part of kind of the, the fairness and balancing act is also a part of the open marketplace where it's like, I'm going to like buy the best stuff for my hero too. Now, of course, the hero with the transcendent can also do that, but um, it doesn't mean they're going to. So here we get to get to the guilds. What will the min max guild sizes be per land, and will subclass have any impact on the pool of skills? So Hubert says on guild oh, on guild size, we haven't come to a solution on any hard numbers of how many guilds I suppose frisky or or I guess how many can be in a guild frisky or if they even have control of that. Frisky Fox goes on to say, we've talked about adding multiples to it, i.e. having a larger guild if you have more plots of land, but nothing zeroed in. So just, you know, everything up in, in the works is what I take that for. Uh, for the second, Hubert says, for the second question, we are in the process of prototyping a combat system, and it's a work in progress, and we are making changes, so it's, uh, so I can't say it's going to be one way or another, but we do want subclass to have an impact on combat and skills is one way to do that. Um, but how we want it to end up is too difficult for me to say at this point. Uh, so balancing of combat and how you see that in general. In the current population, there are certain people that are gathering uh, high level and high stat heroes. Then there are new people coming into the game getting brand new level 1 heroes. How do we balance that? Um, so Hubert says, we have to look at that very closely. We are doing that, but if talking in terms of PvE, PvP, uh, with PvP, we can do a team score where based on your team build uh, or on your team build, their levels and what they are they are, we can <laughs> do matchmaking so that someone with a new level 1 hero doesn't go against uh, a team of Dread Knights with a higher level is what I'm imagining. And with PvE, it's a different problem that we have to solve for and um, yeah, so all right, so in current implementation of the stat genes, we have green stat gene, blue stat gene. Um, I was also agreeing with this too. That like, over, you know, they kind of made this seem like such a big deal, the, the blue and green stat gene, and it kind of seems like less and less, or you know, almost negligible. Uh, you know, as the game moves on, especially. Um, plan to ha- uh, Huber says, plan to have that be an element in the land tournaments. That's interesting. Uh, you are right, though, that they are intended to be a smaller bonuses green. Gene is just a boost right at the start, uh, and blue is a boost over time. Other than that, the fact that the hero has a modifier, we can use that for other things. Like I said, I have plans to use these genes in the land tournaments. So that's probably the most interesting takeaway from that. Is that has something or anything to do with the land tournaments. I wonder what that would be. Closing remarks. Um, Just kind of reading through it real quick. You know, Hebrew says, I'm very excited for what we have coming in the coming weeks. Uh, there's a lot very close to being ready. I'm excited to see everyone interact with what is com- with what is coming. We have patches that are light, but there are a lot of moving parts, and those weeks give us the time to get the big features uh, where they need to be. Uh, and Dreamer finishes by saying, to tie a few things together from open and some of the questions, I like how Hubert introduced the perilous journey, and with one of the questions about how we are careful about the economy, uh, we are building out more and more features, more than just a Dex and Marketplace, perilous journey, which they keep using that like brand, it's almost like a, a brand cat like, phrasing, which is odd, but perilous journey is going to be really important to follow and to understand the first hint to burning. I get a lot of DMs about the number of heroes, saturation of the market, you know, creating class prices going up and or certain class prices going up and down. I hope everyone appreciates we don't react quickly to short, short-term changes, but we do want to make sure there are some fun ways to have a healthy ecosystem. Stay tuned for Perilous Journey, uh, not only from an economic perspective, but going from one realm to another and bridging, not just to make it fun and beautiful and interesting opportunity for someone to invest. But we want to, uh, in, the, in the space, apologize if there are good questions in our DMs we haven't gotten to. Excited about DFK tomorrow. DFK day tomorrow. Uh, and Frisky Fox, I guess, wrapped it up. 
I love that we all know that Frisky Fox demands the the to have the mic last. <laughs> Is like uh, I don't know if anyone caught that a couple of AMAs ago, but Bolin kind of was or Bolon was like, "Oh, Frisky, I, I messed up the rotation. I didn't I didn't come to you last. I'm sorry." And he was like, "Yeah, I'm a control freak. Like, always get to me last." But I thought that was kind of funny. So he wraps it up by saying, "Heroes, we started at 2,000 with the Gen Zeros, of course. Now we have close to 130,000 heroes, maybe more right now. It's a question of supply versus demand. We want to be a game played by hundreds of thousands of people, and that pool will need to grow. The market is efficient and will balance things." You'll see the floor prices go up and down as those things come into play. Our job is to create an ecosystem where heroes have the uh, utility and the return on investment is positive and it's an enjoyable experience. That's what we are hard at work. Um, that's what we are hard at work every day uh, trying to do, excited for things to come. From the start, we've done things that nobody has done and we aren't stopping. Stay tuned and we have some pretty cool announcements coming up. I, I always say it, but you guys are the best community ever. Bullish. So that's that. Okay, so that is the AMA that was this earlier this morning. 